This time on Burnouts and Rotor Blades, we make sure our G-Body's e-brake works with our new LS brake setup. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. It's been a while since we've worked on the family burnout wagon because it hasn't broken. Um, but there are a couple of things that have needed a little bit of love. The first of which is the emergency brake. I couldn't at the time whenever I installed the rear axle figure out how to make the emergency brake set up work with the stock brake cables that came with the uh, family burnout wagon. But I have something in mind and I know it works because I did it on the Vega. One of the problems with the family burnout wagon is that it's not very useful as a wagon. Anytime you try to load anything in the back, it immediately starts scraping the rear tires on the inner fender well, even after I beat the crap out of the inner fender wells to roll the fenders. So what I've gotten is some 1984 Chevy Caprice, the box style Caprice, rear springs that should be able to raise the back up a little bit and have a higher spring rate because they are from a heavier car. They should be a direct bolt-on swap, and we're going to change those out this time as well. The last thing that needs a little bit of attention is something that we've already covered once before, and it was my crappy welding of the rear end brackets for the Trick Chassis 8.8 .8 rear end swap kit. I re-welded the other side whenever it broke loose. It broke loose the very first time I tried to load up and launch on slicks, and uh, the other one, well, it broke, you know, during that Christmas video. <laughs> haven't fixed it since. The bolt has been holding it in, which is why I'm such a huge fan of leaving the hardware in. So we're going to fix that as well this time. Now the first order of business is to contend with this crack right here. I thought it was my weld that cracked, but apparently it's Chevy's metal. We'll push that back into place, hit it with the grinder. See, I neglected to weld this whole area down here. So we'll weld all of that so that there's more area for this uh, this bracket to pull on from the frame. This coil spring is right in our way. Since we want to remove it anyways, we'll go ahead and take it out of the way, which will just help us later when we swap out the coil springs for the box Caprice springs. All right, now that that's all booger welded in there, it's time to move on to the emergency brake cable. All right, so I snaked this around so I could get the most out. Like a glove, don't even have to drill it out. Now we gotta measure the excess and cut. We need to be able to adapt the cable end from this bullet style to something that will hook onto here. So what I did was I ordered this low car EC81FC which is a very simple bracket and I modified it in the back so that the cable can slide through this loop and allow that bullet to hang in there. What that does for us is allows us to adapt that cable to this so the cable will feed through slide down into there, the spring still sits on the back side, and then we'll have a functioning parking brake. When I originally did this on the Vega, I drilled through the cable swedges that were on the stock e-brake cables, and then slid them over the e-brake cable that was left in the car and welded it on the back side. However, these cables were harder than anything known to man, and I just could not drill through them no matter how sharp the bit was. So it's on to plan B. Any ideas?
here we have the shock Chevy Malibu wagon rear springs and they're in pretty good shape but here we have the stock Chevy box uh, Caprice springs and they're the same size bottom and top mounting positions but they're about I don't know I'd say three inches taller and they look about the same thickness so this should act like an overload spring and just give us a little bit of clearance between the, the top of the tire and the fender especially whenever there's a little bit of weight in the back. Ha, I win. Still needs new shocks, but I don't mind the way it sits. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and want to see more like it. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey guys, Burnout's Rotor Blades here. And if you're like me, and by that I mean cheap, you may also have a old wagon window that's just not staying up the way it used to. Well, there's an easy fix for it, and I'll show you right now. An offcut of PVC pipe will lock right in on the edge of that gas shock to hold it up. Problem solved. I wanna to talk to you guys real quick about safety glass. Now I have right here some safety glass and I'm just gonna show you. Now I don't really condone smashing stuff up at the at the junkyard, but I'm gonna do this just for this explanation. So hit this one. Oh, oh, it's safety glass. Which means it breaks into a bunch of little pieces. But, and it's supposed to, but this is tinted. So it's got a it's got a filament of tint on the back. So it won't actually come apart like it's supposed to. It sticks together. And the problem is, the safety glass doesn't come off the plastic. So it's potentially, it could potentially, whenever it, you know, whenever you get an accident, slice the face of the person because now it's a bunch of shards of glass stuck to a sheet like a big piece of sandpaper rather than something that just kind of explodes and becomes relatively benign.